Hey, Jimmy, sometimes, what, I, I sometimes play games before the movie starts. Is that why you bring football to the, fin- to the, to the cinema every time I see you? No. That's why I bring my brain, my brain. Um, uh, that's where I've been going wrong. One of my favorite ones, which my wife hates, is a game that I call Mistaken Star. <laughs> and what I do is I look around the audience, the viewers, or, you know, I I'll sometimes do this in other environments too, but I look around an audience and I say, hey, isn't that um, Jack Lemon over there? <laughs> <laughs> um, and then you try. You have to find the person who looks a little bit like Jack Lemmon. So you're pretending to see someone famous, like, and you've mistaken them for a star. So yeah, usually it's isn't it? But isn't it like it's like um, young Jack Lemmon or yeah, yeah. elderly Brad Pitt? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, you could be yeah, more, yeah. more specific. Does definitely help for sure. Um, then there's another game right. I like to play. Guess my death. Guess my death. <laughs> what? This is like this is. Oh, no, that's why you brought tarot cards. I get it now. Yeah, yeah. which I pronounce tarot. Um, <laughs> let's see. Is that the name of this game? What would you call it? Is that a good name for it? Yeah, guess, guess my death. Guess okay. my death. So guess I'm, my death. I'm, yes. All right. Yeah, I like it. Okay. I'm well, that's thinking, funny you should mention because okay. I've prepared some movie deaths oh. as well. I wonder whether you can guess my death. Okay. 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 Oh, what happened there? I stepped on the cord <laughs> that connects the microphone to its wire. Basically, I pulled the uh, micro- wire right out. Whew. That was my death. If you guess my death, it was because <laughs> I stepped on a microphone cord and was finally silenced. And the audience is thankful. <laughs> um, so I'm guessing. Oh, no, you're guessing one of my films. Yeah. Is that right? Yeah, so yeah, yeah. I think I think yeah. You could, come on, uh, hit hit me up with a question. My encyclopedic film knowledge, okay, will uh, well, I'm sure be okay. instantly defeated by your superior experience. Um, 1998. 1998. I'm gonna. I want to wrong foot you a little bit, so I'm gonna give you the wrong <laughs> actor. That's not not difficult. This is not the wrong actor. This is not the actor who died. Okay, Jeff Bridges, 1998. Oh, right, Jeff Bridges. 1998. So this is probably Big Lebowski. It is. Nice. Oh, but I'm trying to. Who dies in the Big Lebowski? Nice. Um, does John Turturro die in the Big Lebowski? I'm going to guess. I'm going to guess John Turturro. No, he no. is, uh, I think, in and out of prison, perhaps, but not a full death. Oh, God. Okay, okay. I, I need a second clue, then. Actor? Or... Yeah. Oh, what, whatever you think will... Whatever you think will hand it to me on a plate so I can score the points. Steve Buscemi. Steve Buscemi. Oh, man, until five seconds ago, I had forgotten that Steve Buscemi mm-hmm. was in The Big Lebowski. Yeah. Right, how does Steve Buscemi die in The Big Lebowski? I think he's thrown from a car um, somewhere, like thrown from a speeding car uh, as it goes around a corner. Is that right? Something like that happens. No, it's not actually not right. Do you need more, do you need <laughs> okay. more So when he says something like that happens, you meant no, no, nothing yeah. like that happens. <laughs> yes. Here, another hint. German nihilists. Does that help you? Oh, my God. That should help So you. wait a second now. Is... Oh, now I'm trying to remember the name of the woman who is who is in um, in the Big Lebowski. Who's like a performance artist? Yeah, um, it is. Oh, it's a, Julianne Moore. That's yeah, it. Julianne Moore. Is it, it now? Is he killed by Julianne Moore as part of a performance artist? So it's like staged event. I love your rewrites of the script here, but. <laughs> no. Did any of this happen in the Big Lebowski? It's a long time since I've seen it. <laughs> Is this where I spill the beans, or do you keep? Yeah. Do I let you flail even longer? No, no, no. Spill those beans. So he, there's a scene where the they, uh, Jonathan Goodman, Jeff Bridges, and Steve Buscemi uh, sort of do battle with the German nihilists who've kidnapped um, the, the the real Lebowski's daughter in a parking lot outside a bowling alley, and <laughs> right. a, f- a shot is fired. I think it turns out to be a blank, but Steve Buscemi kind of a fragile character, dies of a heart attack at that moment. <laughs> so they think he's been shot, and they're looking around for a gunshot wound. And then John Goodman, with all of his military experience, he says, no, it's cardiac arrest. 
you know, I barely remember that event from the film yeah. at all. I'm glad you mentioned Bowling Alley because I was starting to think maybe I'd never seen The Big Lebowski, yeah. but I've seen it at least <laughs> a lot twice. Of, a lot of bowling, a lot of bowling. Okay, so so far I scored zero. Yeah, okay, that's okay. Right, my, t- my turn. Okay, try this. Try yeah, this. Okay. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Uh, okay, my my third favorite movie, Death, Ooh. comes from 1990, mm-hmm. and it's a film directed by Paul Verhoeven. Paul Verhoeven. So that would be. Oh oh oh. <laughs> Is that? Are you making sounds there to cover the cover the sound of frantic googling? <laughs> yes. <laughs> well, he had he had a film around that time, Black Book or something like that, right? But I think it's oh, actually it's before before Black Book. I think it's um uh, not not the Fatal Attraction one, the other one. Um, <laughs> uh, yeah, it's before Fatal Attraction. Oh, before um, no um. Oh, uh, Sharon Stone, Sharon and the Stone. Ice Pick, and uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, Basic Instinct. It's before Basic Instinct. You even. just gave it away. It's Sharon. It's Sharon Stone. No, it's not Sharon Stone because it's before that movie. So is it an Arnold Schwarzenegger film? Yeah. Oh, well done. Yes, it is an Arnold Schwarzenegger film. Oh, wow, you might be getting three points here. I don't know. I'm trying to remember the Arnold Schwarzenegger film now. It's not Big Mama or Twins. No. Um, what is? The... Tell me when you want another clue. I want, uh, yeah, another clue, please. Just the title. Just remind me of the title. Just the title. Uh, I'm going to give you half a clue. It's from a Philip K. Dick short story, script by Ed Neumeyer. Mm. It's called Total... Total Recall. Total Recall, yes. Okay, okay. I'll tell you now, a lot of people die in Total Recall. A lot of people die in Total Recall. Um, Is Is it a named actor that dies? No, Someone, it's it's okay. a, no, it's an, a not a no, it's a, yeah it's somebody who's an extra, and um, and uh, the only, I'll give you a little hint. You yeah, get, you, you don't get any any uh, any um, points knocked off for this little hint. Uh, I think the film of this the, the theme of this film is depersonalization. Depersonalization. So is it? It's probably death by like memory erasure or something like that. Oh, it's not 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 nearly as personal as that. Oh darn it! Ugh. And it's not the, I feel like someone died by x-ray in one of those films too. And then there were big guns, as I recall. It was a very large gun, wasn't there? Uh, I think this, I mean, there's a lot of kind of shooting and stuff. Yeah. I don't, I, I don't think I can get it. It's too... Okay. Uh, your final clue. Yeah, yeah. Um, is uh, it all happens mm-hmm. on a, a, a particular mode of low speed Public transport. This could be a streetcar. It's not what? a streetcar. It's a it's a no. kind of public transport inside a building. Oh oh, in like an elevator, or an escalator, or something. Oh, an escalator. Very good. No no no. Escalators are no. safe. I don't think you can die <laughs> on an escalator. <laughs> they get dragged inside the escalator. No, it's not. So Schwartz, I you know. I, yeah, zero points. You I said escalator, didn't you? I think I'm going to give you one point. I got there. there. You, you did say escalator. Wow. So, um, you know, at, at a reasonably early point in the film, um, Schwarzenegger's running away from the bad guys. Yeah. Um, I think either up or down an escalator, and he's dodging behind other people, and the guy in front of him on the escalator gets shot. Okay. So Schwarzenegger then just uses him as a human shield, Love and it. the guy in front of him just gets shot more and more and more to utterly ludicrous um, <laughs> levels. And then I think, you know, so he's kind of using this poor innocent bystander as a human shield who's just getting pulverized. And at the very end, I think the guy who's been you know, brutally murdered, um, then it's like, I think Schwarzenegger chucks him at the bad guys, oh, and, right. you know, and then he gets kind of stamped on by the bad guys as they kind of you know, run to, to chase after Schwarzenegger. So it's it's, it's you know, all about it's, you know, it's very congruent with the themes of depersonalization. Nice. In the oh yeah, and very much so. Very so resourceful to use the body <laughs> to take more shots too. It's a, it's a clever guy, that Schwarzenegger. Like that. Yeah. Okay. Okay. It's well. It's one point to you, nil to me. Hit me with your second. I want to give you an easy one. Um, Thank God for that. What are we doing? Title and film or actor and let's no, do, let's, no. Title is too, too much of a giveaway. Um, let's do actor and year. Yeah, yeah. Actor and year. Yeah, okay, okay. I'm gonna say Robert De Niro, Ooh. 1985. 1985. That's too early for Goodfellas. And he's not a lead in this film. I, I, I want to give you that much because it's not that's helpful. Um, no, I think that's too early for Heat as well. 
what is, uh, I think 1985, that's around King of Comedy. Um, King of Comedy, or was that, King, maybe King of Comedy was like 83. I think, it, like I think King of Comedy is earlier than that. I think it's like 82 or 80. It's very right around the 80s. 80s. Right. What, is, what was Robert De Niro doing in 1985? <laughs> oh, man, I should know this. I went to the cinema a lot in 1985. Ooh. Although, you know, they're probably not to see anything that was 18 rated. All right, let me give you a big clue, which could be a big clue. Okay. I, I think this is an American director who you might think is English. You have good reason to think it's an, an English, because it's a very English cast, Englishy movie, American director. But not Michael Mann? I think he is English, isn't he? Not Michael Mann. No. Nope. Not Michael Mann. No. Nope. Like, yeah, you've got to give me a freebie here. Is this a period movie or was it a contemporary film? It's futuristic. Ooh. Dystopian, sort of, yeah. No, definitely oh, dystopian. Man. Oh, I'm struggling to think of a 1980s movie with Robert De Niro set in a dystopian future. It's not 1984. The year is 1985, but it's. I'm giving you a hint, sort of. It's not 1984. Oh, wait a second. We are talking about Brazil, aren't we? I am. Now you are. <laughs> okay. So wait a second. Robert De Niro. So Robert De Niro, he plays the like the air conditioning engineer who is also the uh, like the gateway to the underground, isn't he, in Brazil? His name is I only saw this Harry Tuttle. Film. Is that his name? Henry Tuttle. Harry Tuttle, yep. Harry Tuttle. I saw this film once um, with uh, a bunch of kids from my youth group. And I think like like the week before, we'd all gone out to the movies and we'd seen like one of the late Roger Moore, James Bond films or whatever, yeah. which was dreadful. And I think all the other kids thought it was great. And then we went to see Brazil. And I remember you know, the girl that I quite liked at the time telling me like, on the bus on the way home that that was the worst film she'd ever seen. <laughs> it was just terrible. Um, that's my overriding memory of Brazil. I can also, I can remember... Um, I can remember some elaborate scenes where characters get facelifts. Yep. Um, and I can remember Robert De Niro struggling through some steaming pipes. Yes. <sighs> but is, Robert De Niro is not the one who gets killed, is he? He actually, in a sense, he gets killed at least once and a <laughs> half. And then I think kind of a third time. Go on, what's my what's my final clue? Don't tell me Steve Buscemi was in it. He gets killed by bureaucracy, kind of quite literally, quite visually. Right, okay, wait a second. I bet a filing cabinet falls on him. Very. Am I right? No, but that's kind of close, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> there, there, there are these bits in the film about all the paperwork he needs to, to perform the services on uh, uh, Jonathan Price's uh, apartment and his ventilation system. Um, and ultimately... Um, they are, I don't know, escaping some of the bad guys at one point. They're in a train station, and all these pieces of paper start attaching themselves to Robert De Niro's body, and he eventually just disappears into this pile of paper. <laughs> There's this wonderful moment of just all the paperwork literally killing people. It's, uh, I think it's one of my favorite deaths in all the film. And they, they say satire is dead. Yeah. <laughs> Good, um, good job. Good. I, so, I want to so, give you a point for the filing cabinet because that's good. That was a definitely okay. Good, I'm fine. Yeah. I'm, gonna, I'm, gonna, I'm, I'm the one marking down the points, so okay, I'm going to be generous to give myself one point. Okay, <laughs> okay here we go. Um, my second murder. Here we go. So this is uh, 1999. Okay, it is a film directed by Jim Jarmusch. Jim Jarmusch in 99. Is it Dead Man? No, no, it's not. Uh I think it may be after that. Night on Earth? No, definitely after that. Is it with Forrest Whitaker? It is with Forrest Whitaker. Oh, my God. Yes. Well done. It is a Forrest Whitaker film directed by Jim Jarmusch, 1999. What was the film? Something about Zen. What was it, Zen? Pretty close. The, the Tao. The Tao of Zen. Or oh, What was the name of that film? Not quite Tao, but Dog. Something Dog. Uh Zen dog, <laughs> ghost dog, ghost dog, ghost dog. I've still, I've only given you one clue, so I, uh, <laughs> you're still on two points here. Do you know what what 
Have you seen Ghost Dog? I, well, yeah, yeah, yeah. Oof. But I probably saw it in 1999. So right, okay, right. We're taxing the memory here. I think I've, I think I've seen it once since then. It's this kind of great hip hop um, soundtrack by yeah. um, the RZA, isn't it? He's the. I, I see. Am I pronouncing that right? The RZA. He's, he's one of the Wu Tang guys, isn't he? Yeah, yeah. It might yeah. be just RZA. I don't know. Yeah, I think it might be the RZA. Anyway, so I think. Um, it yeah, outstanding soundtrack. Uh, Forrest Whitaker is a kind of yeah hip hop samurai. Yeah, yeah. There's this samurai. There's this martial arts angle to it. Is it Forrest Whitaker dying? I don't think he dies in that film. No, is it's it? not. He, he he does spoilers. He does die at the end, but it's not. This is one of Forrest Whitaker's hits. So he car- carries out a hit, which I find extremely amusing. Does he use a sword? He does not use a sword. I need a hint. What can you give me at this point, though? Is it an actor that I would know? Uh, so the actor he kills is Cliff Gorman. Um, <laughs> I did not. I had to look him up this afternoon. I did not know him. Cliff Gorman. Um, uh, I will, will give you a clue. What happens in the bathroom? Okay. Okay. Oh, no. Not a drowning in a toilet. No, thankfully not. No, slightly more tasteful than that. Ah, uh, is he inflated with a hand dryer? <laughs> Hot air directly into the nostrils. I can't believe Jam Jamish did not put in a, a uh, inflate a man with a hairdryer death <laughs> in Ghost Dog. That would have made it an even better film than it already is. <sighs> no. Drowned in not. a sink. I, you could fill up the water in a, in a sink and then drown someone there. Oh, I might. I can't even remember how many clues I've given you. Have I given you two clues or three now? You, you've got me down to the point where I get zero points anyway. So. <laughs> so. Um, uh, so Forrest Whitaker, he sneaks into this gangster's home, yeah. he gets into the basement and he dismantles the plumbing Oh, um, so that he can fire his silenced pistol directly up the waste pipe of the bathroom sink. Oh, God. Um, and then he waits until the, the gangster is you know, brushing his teeth at night. Yeah. Um, and then he, when he leans over the sink um, to look down into the, into the sink, because he can see this kind of red light flashing up through the, the plug hole. Yeah. That's when, that's when Forrest Whitaker shoots him. But the reason I remember the scene so well is because this guy who's this gangster, who's in his kind of mid sixties. Gorman. Um, Cliff Gorman. Cliff Gorman. Exactly. A Hollywood favorite Cliff Gorman. Everyone's favorite gangster. Actor. <laughs> he's, um, he's singing along to a public enemy song. Oh. Um, so he's, he's singing along to Flavor Flav. Um, in exactly the same way that I would do in my dressing gown when I was brushing my teeth and happened to play <laughs> play Public Enemy on the on the stereo in the bedroom. So you saw yourself um, on screen. I saw myself on screen. Yeah, exactly. That's exactly it. Okay. And, uh, I, just such a joy to see hip hop gangsters singing along to Public Enemy. Yeah. It was like, yeah, it, it was a, a scene out of my own life. It doesn't. I don't think it's possible though, because there's the P trap in there. It's that part of the sink where there's a curve in the pipes. In order to uh, that, that's the bit he dismantles. You see, he he dismantles that uh, oh. part so that he's got a straight run up from the yeah. Okay, not only is he a samurai, he's a he's a pretty good plumber as well. I think Cliff Gorman would have been, uh, I think, in tune with the sewer gas smell, and he'd say something's wrong. I'm not going <laughs> to lean over the sink at this time because there's <laughs> sewer gas escaping. But I don't after after you've smoked so many cigars, maybe you don't have very much sense of smell. True that. Okay. Yeah, no points, no points. Uh, no, I give you. I give you one okay, point. Okay. I give you one point for my plumbing knowledge. Yeah, yes, exactly. Yeah. All right. right I'm, I'm, yeah, you're currently leading two points to one, so I'm going to have to play a stormer on this final. You're going to crack what this. One. I know you're going to get this one because this one. Your first clue is that this one involves an actor we've already talked about. 1992, 93, maybe I saw it in 93, but it probably came out in 92. I'm going to say Neil Jordan. I'm going to give you the director on this one. Oh, my goodness. So <sighs> with an actor we've already talked about. So you must be talking about Ray Fiennes. I must not, oh. must not be. No, absolutely not. Um, we can't be talking about Nicholas Holt. Nope. Um, and think... Anya Taylor-Joy probably wasn't even born. Yeah, I don't then. think either of those two were born at that point. They were very young. And I'm I'm going to give you another little hint because this is another one where it confuses Americans and English, or let's say UK folks. Yeah. Okay. So it's a Neil Jordan directed film. Yeah. 1992. Yeah. Maybe um, 93. Is it maybe. John Leguizamo again? Is it who? Is it John Legu? Is it Le- Le- Leguizamo? Leguizamo. Leguizamo. Come oh, man. No. You're always getting me with the pronunciation. No, it's no. 
more. We talked to. We just talked about him, and it's not Clive Gorman. Oh, oh, I see. Oh, oh, you mean? Oh, right. So you're talking about? It's got to be. It's either Forrest Whitaker, or well, I don't think Neil Jordan directed a Schwarzenegger film. No. Did Neil Jordan direct a Jeff Bridges film? Not this one. <sighs> I'm trying to think what. So Neil Jordan had done Company of Wolves in about 85. I think he made High Spirits, was it? In, I'm going to guess, 88. Okay. You can guess all you want on those. It's not that bad. <laughs> I'm struggling to think what Neil Jordan... Oh, wait a second. Yes, it is Forrest Whitaker. Because... <laughs> it is. Um, uh, oh, man. It was um, The Crying Game. It is. Neil it's Jordan. <laughs> Neil Jordan directed The Trying Game um, with Forrest Whitaker, who is run over by a tank in the first reel of that film. Is that the murder you're talking about? I give you three points. <laughs> I'm not sure I deserve all three, but yeah, I'm taking that. Give, give yourself as many as you want. Yeah, it's, I, I, it was just such a jarring moment because you're under the impression Forrest Whitaker is the protagonist in this film. Yeah, He sort of led the film for the first 20 or 30 minutes. All of a sudden, he gets hit by a tank, and it becomes, uh, is it Stephen Ray's film? Yeah, yes, it is, yes. Um, it just, it's just, it's one of the most jarring things I've ever seen in cinema, and I loved it. I love it when someone just says, okay, you got the film for the beginning, but I'm going to kill my protagonist and move on. Um, I thought it was just fantastic. So I, I like that, because it also, just like Brazil, it sort of mixed, uh, you know, the American content and the English content in terms of, like, the, the star, the, the, yeah, the cast and such. It's nice to be surprised, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, yeah. Nice to be surprised. Right, okay. Well, my my third one, yes, well, probably one of the most memorable and longest, I would say, deaths Ooh. Ooh. in the cinematic canon. Um, this is a film uh, from 1968. Ooh. Yeah. Um, and I'll tell you now, the film that this death features in is in my and many, many other people's top three films of all time. 1968, what you got? 1968 top films? Oops. <laughs> um, let's see. That's not... Um, that's not the Space Odyssey, is it? Two th- <gasps> 2001? It is 2001, a Space Odyssey. Yes, absolutely. So, um, so what, it, what, uh, what death could we possibly be talking about? Um, well, there's the... the the, the Dave's Dave's rebirth birth kind of death at the very end is it, I don't know if I'd call that a death is that a death? Well, I don't know. It's, it's like his whole life yeah. and death is accelerated. I mean, I think you know at the very end of the film, he's you know he's kind of a, a desiccated corpse yeah, yeah. staring up at the monolith, isn't it? But then he I becomes he has the to baby. die to be reborn. Yeah. So by I think by definition, it is a death. Yeah, yeah. So he becomes uh, the very last image is a baby, I believe, right? Baby in utero kind of situation. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. But yeah, you, there are points where he's also sort of watching his own death in that sequence too, and it does take many minutes. Did I guess that correctly or no? You did guess that oh. correctly. Oh, man. Ooh. There was me feeling smug about getting three points in the final uh, round, and you've got three points in the okay. final round. That <laughs> means that it's five points to you wow. and four points to me. Uh, you are close. the winner. Oh, that was close, though. There were changes of lead right there at the end, a couple of changes of lead. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> we tried to make it exciting, but basically you just steamrolled it over me. <laughs> I should have known by now. Why did I propose a quiz? Uh, that was a terrible It was idea. good. It was hard. A lot harder than I thought. I mean, in part because we're both choosing these old films, old farts <laughs> choosing old films. I mean, if we <laughs> did something people. a little earlier, more recent. But yeah, we, I, not, did, we, did we choose? I don't think we chose a single film from the 21st century. Um, I did not. I had. Yeah, uh, neither, yeah. neither did I. Mine yep. were spread over about eight or nine years between the 80s and 90s. So actually about 10 years, maybe 13 so yeah the podcast for old people welcome to our world but i think the movie is going to start the one that we're waiting for thank god for that i've eaten all the popcorn before it even started (laughs) 